everyone i'm back with another video and in this video we are going to solve the lead code questions for the queue data structure and in my previous video we have seen what is a queue and we have implemented a queue in apex uh, that is the language used in salesforce now we are going to solve as always like for each data structure we solve the lead code questions we do a logic what uh, we implement what we have learned to the lead code questions so let's start so we are going to solve these two questions lead code 2073 time needed to buy tickets and lead code 232 we uh, will implement a queue using two stacks so let's let me go to the lead code screen okay so this is the question time needed to buy tickets what does it say there are n people in a line queuing to buy tickets where the zeroth person is at the front of the line and n minus one person is at the back of the line um so okay let me straight away go to the input so you are you would be given an tickets array and you would be given another input k which is equal to any specific index of the array so you have to find out um, by when the kth index of the array would be able to fulfill uh, would be able to get its ticket so uh, let's look into the explanation in the first pass everyone in the line buys a ticket and the line becomes one to one and in the second pass it would be zero one zero like subtracting this uh, uh, subtracting one from the above value so it would be zero one zero so and after that k uh, after that like uh, we can say that since k is equals to two this would be our zeroth index so our zeroth index would uh, get its two tickets after k after six seconds so and uh, similarly let me go to the other example so it is our array is 5 1 1 1 and k is equals to 0 that means when will the first index uh, would be able to get all its five tickets so in the first pass everyone in the line buys a ticket and the line becomes 4 0 0 0 so uh, and in the in the next four passes only the first person since the other three persons does not require any ticket only the first person uh, only the first person requires four tickets so for each pass um, he'll get a ticket and the answer would be answer would be eight seconds so hope you understood the question uh, it's basically like for each uh, for each second we can uh, we can give uh, one index one ticket and we have to find uh, like how much time it will require for kth index to get its uh, required number of minimum tickets so if if i go back to the question line you can see that uh, in our question it's written that there are n people in a line queuing to buy tickets this queuing somehow uh, we can use our queue data structure to solve it okay so let me go to my screen uh, my vs code screen and let's solve this uh, so this is the queue implementation class which i showed you in my previous video and this is these are the inputs that we receive uh, so as an initialization step, I'll insert every element of the input tickets array to the queue using the queue.nq operation. I told you the nq operation uh, is like the push operation uh, in a queue. Now we will declare two uh, variables that is the time in seconds and the current index. And uh, we'll do a loop while queue.peak peak would give us the frontmost element in a queue. So if you remember, the deletion happens from the front. So uh, whenever we need to delete, we can do a queue.peak, which will give us the first element in a queue. So in my queue implementation class, I have defined uh, if the if we if the stack if the queue is empty, then just re return minus one specific value. So I'm checking while. Uh, so basically, this condition means till queue is not equal to empty. Okay, so now what I am doing, I am uh, using the DQ operation. Using the DQ operation, I am removing the front element of the queue that is five, since we are taking five one one one, and then I am checking if the current index is equal equal to k. If the our current in index is not equal to k, so we can go ahead and then I am checking if the element that is five five minus one is greater than equal to zero. That means uh, you need a ticket. Uh, this person needs a ticket if yes then increase the time time would be increased 
then I am again uh, in queuing this element uh, back to the queue uh, and I am decreasing minus 1 from it. So now I will enqueue queue uh, 5 minus 1, 4 to the queue. And now uh, using this NQ operation, our uh, insertion happens from the rear end. So now after f our first iteration, this uh, our queue would be 1, 1, 1, 4. And 4 was at the starting, but now uh, when I enqueue it, it will go to the end. Similarly, I'll uh, again go, it will go back to the loop and it will remove the, it will do a DQ operation. It will remove the frontmost element. It will check if the current index is equal equal to K. If uh, it needs a ticket, increase the time and uh, do a, if, uh, and do an Q dot NQ operation sub by subtracting minus one from it. Then I'm checking if the current index is equal equal to tickets dot size minus one. That is the, this array. If it is equal to this, then make the current index as zero because, because we don't want a overflow error works. So let's say now our current index is equal equal to K. That is the kth index. We have to check when will our kth index uh, get all its minimum tickets. So I'm checking if the element is less than equal to one. Uh, so uh, if it is less than equal to one, we can break from this loop. And if uh, the element is equal equal to one, it will require one more uh, ticket, right? So if since it will require one more ticket, we can do a time seconds plus plus. Otherwise, we can break from the loop. So that is that is a like a solution using Q to solve the time needed to buy tickets. So let me copy the solution and uh, now in my execute anonymous window and I've copy pasted the code there and let me click on execute and let's see the output. So let me click on debug only. The result is three. That is absolutely correct. Now let me go back to my lead code screen and let me copy the solu uh, the first input 232 and give k is equals to 2 and output should be 6. So let me copy paste it and k is equals to 2 and the output should be 6. Uh, boom, result is 6. So that is working correctly. Awesome. So we have successfully solved lead code 2073. Now we'll solve lead code 232. That is we, we are going to implement a queue using stacks. So let me go to the lead code screen. Okay, so they are saying you have to implement a queue using stacks. So queue has a principle of first in first out and we have to use two stacks. The queue should support all the functions of a normal queue that is push, peak, pop and empty. So the push operation is similar to the NQ operation that push that pushes the element to the back of the queue. The pop element is similar to the DQ operation that removed the element from the front of the queue. Peak returns the element at the front of the queue and empty checks whether the queue is empty or not. Okay, so I've implemented the solution for it and let me go to my, uh, so this is my developer console. I've implemented the solution for it. Let's uh, take a look into it. So I've created one class Q using stacks and I've uh, created two private uh, list of integers and in the constructor, I'm initializing these two list. Um, so the, uh, in the push operation, I'm going to insert all our elements, uh, whatever element we get in the uh, stack one. So our stack, so whatever elements we push will push into the stack one. Now, uh, for before going through the pop operation, let us go through the peak operation. Okay. So in the peak operation, what we will do is we'll move all the elements in the stack one to stack two, because you know, in a stack, the deletion happens from the rear end and, uh, in the queue, the deletions have deletion happens from the front end. So, uh, what we have to do is, uh, I'll move all the elements of stack one because the insertion happens in stack one to stack two. So now, uh, like, uh, all the elements would get reversed in the stack two, and then we can do a pop operation from the stack. So let me show you. So I uh, first, the first if statement is like, if this dot stack two dot size is equal, equal to zero, that means if the stack two is empty, then move all the elements of stack one to stack two. I'm using this dot stack two dot add. That is the list methods add and remove. 
and then I'm removing uh, all the elements of stack one and adding it to stack two. And in the end, I'm uh, returning this, this dot stack two, and we are uh, this, this will give us the last index and it will return us the last element. The last element in the stack two uh, would have been the first element in stack one. So now let us go through the pop operation. The pop operation will uh, do a this dot peak, which will move all the elements in the stack one to stack two. Then uh, we are going to remove uh, the last element in the stack two. So the last element in the stack two would be the front element in the stack one. So we would follow the principle of first in first out. Uh, so if you remember in my last video, I show, I told you that uh, the pop, the DQ operation or the popping of an element in a queue is a big of N uh, operation that is big of N uh, time complexity operation. B this is because when you remove the first element in an array, you have to shift, uh, you have to move all the elements by, by one index and that becomes a big of N times operation. By using two stacks, we can uh, we cannot uh, we cannot improve the worst case time complexity, but in the average case, we can uh, do it a big O of one. That is the constant time complexity. In the average case, we can make make the pop operation as a constant time uh, when we are implementing queue using two stacks. So uh, we have gone through the push method. We have gone through the pop. We have gone through the peak. Peak is the important one here. And uh, then let's look into the is empty. So we are just checking if stack uh, one dot size is zero and stack two dot size is zero. Awesome. Now I'm in my execute anonymous window and I'm initializing the uh, an object for the queue using stack class. Then I'm pushing two uh, values to the queue that is doing a NQ operation. Then I'm doing a my queue dot peak my queue dot peak would move all the elements from stack one to stack two, which will help us in popping it using constant time. Uh, so this, this would give us one and uh, my queue dot pop would return one that be because one was the first element that was inserted and only two would be left in the queue. After that, we will do a, a my queue dot is empty and it would return false. So let me click on execute and let's see if it works. Awesome. It worked. It gave us the expected value. Okay. So now we have solved the lead code 232 as well. And, uh, and we have implemented our Q knowledge to solve lead code questions. So that's all for today's video and hope you learned something new in this video and do comment in this video if you want me to share the code as well so that you can practice and do more questions, more uh, such questions. Thanks everyone.